I hate to bring you this horrible news, but the Sony a7 IV has been sold. It's out of here. It's gone. Finito, okay? In typical Terry Warfield fashion. Let me tell you all about it. Let's go. What's up, y'all? It's Terry Warfield. I'm back for another video. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Remember to be thankful for your freaking life today because you did not have to have that. Before we get on with the meat potatoes, I did not script this video, so I'm probably going to mess up. But second of all, I'm very curious to know what you might think throughout the video in the comment section. So let me know as the video goes on what you think. And, um... Some of y'all are going to be salty. But anyways, let me get on to the, the story on why I'm making this video. Some of y'all probably remember I made a video like this not too long ago about the Sony ZV-E1 and the FX3. And, you know, here we are again. And there's probably going to be more videos. But anyways, okay, I digress. The Sony a7 IV is a fantastic camera. And you shouldn't feel bad because I know a lot of y'all have probably bought the Sony a7 IV because of Terry. You shouldn't feel bad if you have one. And also it should still be a camera that you should consider to this day because the a7 IV is fantastic. It is a great camera for people who want a hybrid full frame, slightly higher megapixel camera with great video features, great autofocus and all that other good stuff built into it. It's a fantastic camera, but there's always been little things about the Sony a7 IV, first world problems that kind of bugged me. So anyways, before I go on with the video, story time. I went to New York maybe about a year and a half ago to test out a camera. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet because I don't want you to click off the video. But in testing of this camera when I came back, I was like, dang, I don't know if I should, you know, get this new camera or just be thankful for the a7 IV that I have. Because again, the a7 IV is still one of the best cameras out. So I didn't make a move, but ever since then, I can't lie, like I've been, I've been wanting it, okay? And this camera is the Sony a7R5. Yes, I have sold my Sony a7 IV for the Sony a7R5. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out and do this. The a7IV is more than enough camera for probably 95% of the people who bought it, but there were things about it that really annoyed me that the a7R5 simply just fixes, okay? Now, albeit it is more expensive, and the other thing is, no, it's not a perfect camera either, but the things that really bugged me about the a7IV the A7R5 fixed. Like what, Terry? Okay, let me hop right into those, okay? So, we looking at the camera from the top down, immediately one of my most annoying things about the A7 IV was the fact that it didn't have two locking dials, okay? So the A7 IV does have a lock on this outer bumper dial, okay? Which is fantastic, which is it's totally great because the A7 III didn't have one. But it didn't have a lock on this dial right here. And I did find from time to time that the lock would rotate if it was in my bag or something like that. And I just prefer to not have to worry about that. The next thing, since we are looking at the camera on a7 IV was the EVF. Now, I'm not saying that the a7 IV's EVF was bad, but it was a 3.69 million dot EVF. And you know, for the price point around 2,500 bucks, that's pretty standard for the course. However, Owning a Sony A7S III before, okay? Using the Alpha 1 before, and then seeing the EVF in the A7R5, which is nine plus million dots with super high frame rate and brightness. Yo, it's a night and day comparison comparing the two EVFs. But to add to that, one of my biggest gripes with the Sony A7 IV was the rear display. First of all, I'm okay with the fact that it was just a rotating vlog screen, okay? That's pretty standard for the course. But the fact that it was such a low resolution screen really bugged me when I test all of these other cameras and all these other cameras that cost less have better screens. So the fact that they put a much better screen in the Sony a7R 5W, the fact that this screen does all of this stuff right here, it is a four axis display that can do vlog mode or it can do tabletop mode, which is for photographers, a big deal, okay? Just like that. But from the a7 IV, it's a photo camera. It's a 33 megapixel photo camera. So the vlog style flip out monitor wasn't always the best when I'm dialed in for photography. So being able to have both in one camera is fantastic. And honestly, I wish Sony would just come out with this four axis display for every freaking camera moving forward. Now the next thing, mega pixels. Okay, no, mega pixels. Now the Sony a7 IV, I've always said it's 33 megapixels. It's a fantastic sweet spot between 24 and like the higher megapixels, like 50, 
or 60 or whatever. So I never felt the Sony a7 IV was lacking when it came to megapixels, but obviously if you offer me more, like 61 megapixels, yes, I would prefer to have more whenever I need it, okay? Now, the downside of 61 megapixels, especially when you're shooting uncompressed RAW, is freaking huge file sizes, okay? So luckily with the a7r5 you can go in and change the different file sizes and compression methods and all that other stuff so you don't have to use it if you don't want to the full 61 megapixels but i will tell you having 61 megapixels man when you take photos on this camera at 61 megapixels, you can literally crop all the way to freaking Pluto and you still have more than enough detail there to make a whole different composition out of the same photo you already took. So that's a big deal. The other big deal is the fact that the A7R5 in crop mode is 26 megapixels versus the A7IV's 15 megapixels. Now, Again, most of the time we posting this stuff to social, so it's not a huge deal, right? But I would much rather have a 26 megapixel still versus a 15 megapixel. So for me, it's a two on one thing, right? Because 26 megapixels is right around where most of Sony's APS-C cameras are and all of the competitors' APS-C cameras are and some full frame cameras. 26 megapixels is a lot of detail. So having a 61 megapixel and a 26 megapixel in the same camera, it's freaking game changing. Okay, now the next thing I wanna talk about is autofocus. Now, again, this is one of them things where the a7 IV was great when it came to autofocus, but we ain't gonna sit here and act like it's not Sony's last gen autofocus system, which again, is not a knock because Sony's last gen autofocus is still better than everybody else's autofocus. Auto, well, blah, I'm getting tongue tied. They're current gen autofocus systems, okay? But there were times, especially with me, because I shoot a lot of sports, and some of y'all could be like, oh, Terry, why y'all got an Alpha 9.3? Give me Alpha 9.3 money, okay? No, I'm not doing all that. So I do use these for shooting sports, and there are times when, like, you know, basketball players are running up the court that sometimes they might have a hard time tracking their face and all that other good stuff. But overall, the a7 IV is really, really good. Well, the a7R5 was the first camera from Sony with the AI chip in it, and it does like the human pose estimation, and it can detect planes, trains, automobiles, aliens, roaches, insects, all of that stuff. It's just a more competent system, right? So it just takes the A7IV's autofocus and really bumps it up and puts it on steroids. And I just appreciate having a better autofocus system. The other thing with autofocus is this camera has like DMF built into it. So what I mean is, even when the camera's in autofocus, you can still turn the focus ring on the lens, right? And it'll switch over to manual focus until you're done, right? But instead of it having a re-rack focus from over here, it will start the autofocus from the last autofocus point that you selected manually. And this, this is so clutch because the A7 IV doesn't do it. It sounds like something small until you actually are using it in real time, then it's actually a really good feature. The other thing that I need to touch on is stabilization. Now, I ain't gonna lie, the A7 IV was not the best when it came to stabilization, okay? It was like very, very mid. But the A7R5 has eight stops of built-in stabilization, and it's not a freaking gimmick, okay? I have the ZV-E1 right here as great stabilization. It's got dynamic stabilization, but it costs 30%. The Lumix S5 2X that I'm using up here also has fantastic stabilization, and the A7R5 is the first Sony camera that I've ever used, minus the ZV-E1, but the ZV-E1 cost me a 30% crop that looks so good. Okay, so this is the stabilization out the Sony A7R5, and I promise y'all, I'm not trying to hold it steady. This is just regular arm vlog length, man. The other thing I really love about this camera is the built-in microphone quality. I remember when I was in New York testing this camera out, and me and Armando were listening to the files afterwards like, yo, this microphone is so freaking good. And what's crazy is Sony didn't even say anything about it. So. The microphones are great, but the stabilization inside the A7R5 A stops, man. I'm not trying to hold this steady at all. Obviously, it's not perfect, but man, it's really, really good. Now, the A7R5 does have, you know, like 16-bit RAW over HDMI, which Terry's never gonna use, and it does have 8K, which also Terry's not gonna use because the rolling shutter in 8K is honestly so bad that it's not even worth using, in my opinion, and I don't really have a reason to use 8K, but, I will say the Sony a7 IV has a 4K 60 crop and that used to annoy the crap out of me. Now, I've started to use it to my advantage with sports, but I don't like huge crops when it comes to picking different frame rates, which is why I love the ZV-E1 so much because I can roll through all the different file formats with you know no crops being applied. But neither here nor there. The a7R5 only has a 1.2 times crop when it comes to 4K 60. Now, there is a caveat. The a7 IV, 
does not do any type of line skipping, pixel bending, or nothing like that, okay? The A7R5, because remember, it's coming off of a 61 megapixel sensor, does have the line skip to do 4K60 and a few other modes also. But to be honest, okay, unless you have them both side by side, looking for the minute differences, I have never felt like the 4K60 out of the A7R5 was inadequate or that it didn't look good. Obviously the A7 IV has the slight advantage, okay, but in real world practical use, I don't think anybody would notice a real difference. And you still got your S-Log 3 and you know everything else that the Sony A7 IV has, plus more. And there's other stuff that I'm not mentioning, but I'm talking about the stuff that made me switch. And those are the reasons, you know what, I got two more, okay? The first one is white balance. Now, I'm not saying that the A7 IV was bad when it came to picking white balance by itself, but the A7 R5 is just so much more accurate, especially when it comes to skin tone. And as a person who uses auto white balance a whole lot, I typically set it to auto, let it pick it, and I lock it off. Man, I just find that the A7R5 is so much more accurate. And also, there's something about the files out of the A7R5 when it comes to skin tones. I don't know what Sony did with the color science in the A7IV versus the A7R5, but the A7R5 from a Sony camera is the best I've ever used when it comes to color reproduction, hands freaking down. And the last thing that I really love, and then I promise I'm done, is because of the AI chip it has in there, it does have face recognition, but not the typical face recognition. And you know, all of Sony's newer cameras with the AI chip have this too. So it's not like exclusive anymore. But for video, if you are like shooting a wedding or something like that, you can program several people in there. And if let's just say I wanna focus on only the bride out of all of these 40,000 people in the wedding, boom, you tap on her face and it only looks for her face in video, which is crazy. It always did it in photo, but now in video, because of the AI chip, I can literally go through it, boom, bride, boom, husband, boom. You know, whoever the case may be, and it sticks to that person and that person only, and it's always looking for them. So that's why I switched to the Sony a7R5. Again, I'm not bashing the Sony a7IV. Do not feel bad if you have one. And yes, you should still consider buying one if your budget is around 2,500 bucks. But if you can afford it, I think the Sony a7R5 is so good of a camera. Not perfect. It's a pretty slow camera when it comes to readout. It's not a speed demon or nothing like that. But as a whole, this camera is fan-freaking-tastic. And the next thing y'all probably gonna say is, oh, Terry's just gonna make another video when the next camera come out that he's selling the A7R5 for, and your answers, probably yes. This is what I do, I'm a content creator. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you made it this far, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on notification bell so you get notified when new videos go up. And until next time, I'm out of here. Peace and chicken grease types are tear worth it. Much love, y'all. Talk to y'all soon. Peace.